Hello. Let's talk about uh, how do we use the transistor as an amplifier now. Uh, we've learned about how to bias the transistor, and now we want to get some amplification out of this device. Uh, before we get into a very quantitative analysis, we are going to first describe, uh, describe it at a qualitative level so that we understand how the amplification is happening in the device, and then we'll proceed with uh, the more mathematical analysis. So, um, PGT as an amplifier. And again, we're going to start with a qualitative analysis. All right, I'm going to first just uh, draw the uh, a biasing network so that the first step in building any amplifier will be to bias our transistor. And I'm not going to get into the details of a very complex biasing network. I'm just going to you know, put the simplest one uh, so that we don't get confused with the details. And now we have our BBB. Uh, now notice this is just a transistor. So far I've only applied DC sources to bias a transistor. But now I would like to, to get amplification. And we typically talk about or use the transistor to amplify small AC signals. And so we first put the transistor into uh, some kind of DC operating point. We set the DC conditions. And then on top of those DC conditions, we run a small, um, a small wiggle, a small variation or a small AC signal. Okay, and we're going to represent that uh, with the following. I'm going to add right here, let's imagine. I have two sources in series, one of them being my DC source to set the operating point. But then on top of that, I apply a small input signal, AC signal. Okay, I'm going to represent my AC signal with you know, V sub S for, you know, signal coming out of the source. So I'll apply my, my input signal to the base and I'll take out my output at the collector. And we will see that for different uh, amplifiers, we're going to be applying the input and taking the output out of different places. But again, this is just an example. Now, uh, one important thing about notation, now that we're going to be talking about, you know, DC signals and AC, small C AC signals, um, how do we represent, you know, the different types of signals? And our convention is going to be as follows. It's a fairly standard convention. We're going to represent the total instantaneous value of any uh, signal within the circuit with a lowercase letter and an uppercase subscript. So things like the base current, the collector current, the emitter current, uh, VBE, VCE. These represent total instantaneous uh, values. For my DC operating point, the DC values, pure DC, I'm going to represent with capital letters and capital subscripts. So this will be IVAC when I write them like this. This represents yes, the DC values, typically the DC operating point value. And when I'm talking about just the signal value, the small AC signal, I'm going to represent them with lowercase letters and lowercase subscripts. Etc. Those are small signal AC values. Now, <clears throat> for any uh, parameter, it's going to, at, a, at any given point in time, it's going to have an instantaneous value, which is going to be the sum of the DC value plus the small signal AC value. So we're basically, by doing this, we are decomposing the overall signal into its DC component and its AC component and the overall signal is the sum of the two. So for example, uh, let me do IAB as an example, since it's the first one here. At any given point in time, we have the value of the current at the base is going to be equal to the DC uh, value from the Q point 
plus whatever the small signal value we apply to it. Okay. Uh, let's look at it on the IV characteristic. I'm going to draw. So this is my IC, my V, C, E. And now I have my different curves. And they're supposed to be equally spaced. All right. And uh, let me just draw my load line because it's going to come in handy. Okay, again, the load line being a graphical representation of all the possible Q points. And let's imagine that I set the Q point of my uh, transistor somewhere around here. This is my, my Q point. Now, when I apply a small AC signal, what I'm introducing is a disturbance in the circuit. And so uh, my signals are going to move around that Q point. That's what I'm doing. I'm adding a small AC signal. So um, let's look at this uh, small signal that I apply at the base. What this is going to cause is going to cause uh, a small variation in my base voltage, VB. Right. And so this I'm going to get a little wiggle here. And that's going to cause a small variation in my uh, emitter voltage, VE. So I'm going to write here, this is my base, this is my emitter, that's my collector. So if I get a little wiggle here, a little disturbance, that disturbance is going to propagate to uh, my emitter voltage, because the emitter voltage, again, is just 0.7 volts lower than uh, the voltage at the base. Now, when I get a, a wiggle in my emitter voltage, Right, this is my VB, this is my VE, the small wiggle. Um, I'm going to get a change in my emitter current as my uh, emitter voltage goes up and down. My emitter current will go up and down. Um, and so I get a variation in IE as well. And as my IE varies, my IC will vary with IE. And so I'll get a wiggle in IC. And if I get the wiggle in my IC current, that means that the voltage drop across my collector resistor is also varying with that variation in current because of Ohm law, Ohm's law. As my IC increases a little bit, um, if the current through the collector resistor increases, the voltage drop across the collector resistor um, also increases with that current. So let's try to write that um, as a sequence here. Um, so I have my DC operating point which sets the transistor in the linear region of operation. And now I apply small disturbance, small AC signal at the base. And that means that my VB it's going to wiggle, which implies my emitter voltage is going to experience the same amount of wiggle. And this produces a change in emitter current. So my emitter current, as my emitter voltage goes up, my emitter current will go up. So I wiggle in the same direction. And a corresponding change in collector current. So IC will also have the same wiggle. And as IC increases, the voltage drop across RC increases, which means my output voltage decreases. So this is important. If my current, my collector current goes up, my voltage across this resistor RC goes up. And because the voltage drop across the resistor is higher, and VCC is constant, then the voltage at the collector is lower. Okay, I have a bigger voltage drop, that's a lower voltage at the collector. And so it means that my collector voltage, uh, which I have labeled V out, goes down. So notice all these wiggles were in the positive direction, 
Um, so V out, you know. So output voltage changes with inverse polarity and increased amplitude as the input signal. The reason why it is increased amplitude is because my input signal, uh, you know, I have a small variation in my base voltage, right? So that's going to be a small variation in my base current. But the small variation in my base current translates into uh, a variation of beta times that for my collector current. And so there's going to be uh, a gain factor there. Uh, so that's the important thing to keep in mind qualitatively. I'm applying a small change into my input signal in the base. I am getting a large change in my collector output of opposite polarity. So I'm basically having an, an inverting amplifier. Again, this all uh, happens as the signal moves around the Q point. So uh, we have here, you know, our Q point. So this will be our base current. Uh, at the Q point value of the base current, this will be our collector current at the Q point, ICQ, and this is going to be our VCE at the Q point. And this is what I have more or less is as my uh, collector current, my base current, you know, my, my uh, I apply a signal on the base. Basically, what's happening is that this is moving around that Q point, something like this. It's causing my collector current to also move around the Q point. You should do this in a different color. Let's go ahead and do that so nobody gets confused. This one was V C E. Now this is too orange. Uh, so again, we had our base current, which is shifting around the Q point. Our collector current is shifting by a beta times larger amount, also around that Q point. So we can see from uh, the load line that our uh, our signal is moving from, you know, from one point to another along that IV line, uh, across the load line. And then, likewise, my VCE voltage is changing. When the current increases, the VCE voltage goes lower. When the current decreases, the VCE voltage goes higher. Okay. Um, and this is qualitatively what's happening in the circuit. That's how we get amplification. Uh, as a side note, um, just like we split our signals and when we do the analysis, just for, you know, to simplify things, we consider the, the DC uh, operating point and the DC analysis versus the AC analysis. And we split all the signals into the DC component and the AC component. Uh, when we do that, it's going to be useful sometimes to redraw our circuits uh, using the DC equivalent circuit and the AC equivalent circuit. Now, what does that mean? Yeah, it, in reality, it's always the same circuit. Uh, but whenever we are talking about the DC equivalent circuit, we leave all of our DC sources in place and we turn off the AC sources and uh, vice versa. When we are talking about the AC equivalent circuit, we disconnect all the DC sources and we only consider the effect of the AC sources. This is just an application of the principle of superposition, since we're assuming the circuit is linear. Um, so let's do an example just um, with this circuit. We're going to draw its DC equivalent and its AC equivalent.
this is the equivalent circuit. <clears throat> Again, I'm turning off my AC sources, so my input source Vs is off. All my DC sources are still in place. VCC, VBB, RV and RC. Uh, base collector emitter. And when I'm talking about this circuit, I'll be talking about, you know, this is my IC, just the DC portion of IC. This is my, you know, VBE or my VCE. And I'll be talking about uppercase letters with uppercase subscripts, indicating I'm only considering the DC portion of those signals. Uh, on the other hand, the uh, AC equivalent circuit, I will have... Uh, I have to turn off my DC sources. Now, the way you turn off a voltage source is, is you just short it to ground. And so I have my RC here and it's connected to just a short to ground because I've turned off my uh, VCC source since it's a DC source. And then out at the base, I have my small signal VS source, but I'm turning off my, my VBB. DC source, so I'm just shorten it to ground. And this will be my AC equivalent circuit, and when I'm analyzing the AC equivalent circuit, I'm just talking about AC values, so I'm talking about this being, you know, the AC portion of my VCE, the current, I'll call it, you know, IC, uh, VBE, this will be IV, etc. And again, uh, the result, the final result uh, for my circuit is going to be the superposition or the addition of my DC value, DC component plus AC component. And so we represent that, for example, uh, my VCE final value will be the sum of the two components. But we will see that um, it's going to be a lot easier to do our analysis you know, first tackling AC signals, or DC signals, then tackling AC signals, then just mixing everything together. Thank you.